Hi there, my name is Mrs Patman and I'm going to be your teacher today. I'm really looking forward to working together with you. Mrs Dolling tells me you're getting really good now at writing repeated addition equations. She set you this task in the last lesson. Did you manage to write a repeated addition equation which matched this number line? Perhaps you decided to draw out the line and write above each jump what was being added each time. Did you notice that there were three jumps on the number line, each one representing one tenth? So the equation to write to represent this addition equation was one tenth plus one tenth plus one tenth equals three tenths. I hope you got it. Don't worry if not. You were also asked to try and find the answer to this equation. Is this true or is this equation false? I always think it's a really good idea to try and explain why you think something is true or false and explain your thinking. Did you draw a number line to show your answer? This is what I chose to do. I drew my number line and divided it into six equal parts because in the question I knew that I was adding a unit fraction of one sixth and another one sixth. I also tried to remember to ensure that my number line contained the zero at the very start. Then I jumped from zero in a jump of one sixth, and that would make me land on number one sixth. Then I jumped another one sixth, and this time I would land on the number two sixths. Therefore, I know the answer to one sixth plus one sixth is equal to two sixths. So, going back to the original question, I can see that the answer is false. One sixth and another one sixth is equal to two sixths, not two twelfths. So the answer is false. Can you see what mistake might have been made by the person? And I wonder if you can have a look and explain to someone what mistake you think that person made the video if it helps. Perhaps the person answering this question simply added up the numerators, added the one and the one to create the two in two twelfths and added the denominators of six plus six to get the denominator twelve. So perhaps that's what they did. But we know because of previous work that happened that this can't be true when we add a unit fraction and a unit fraction together with the same denominator. Well done for having a go and extra well done if you were able to explain your answer. For today's learning, we're going to be looking at this representation. We've looked at them before in previous lessons. They're called Cuisinaire, and it's unlikely you've got any at home. I've not got any at my home either. We're going to look at them together on the screen. The important thing to focus on is not the letters on them. They don't really matter at all, but to look at the relationship between the rods, which is what we're going to do today. Let's take a look. If the yellow rod is the whole, then what fraction would one of the white rods be? Pause the video and tell a friend or an adult or just tell the screen. Are you back? What fraction do you think one of the white rods would represent. It involves a little bit of our friend visualisation, which I know you've done in other lessons. Visualising is thinking about it in your mind's eye. 
how many of those white rods would be equal in length to the yellow rod? Hmm, I think there would be five. So, with this information, you can say that one white rod is worth one fifth. That's right, you got it. But we haven't got one of those white rods. We have one, two, three of those white rods. So what would our addition equation look like here? If you've got a pen and paper, see if you can write it down. Pause the video if you need to. Have a look. This is what I wrote. One fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth is three fifths. But we needed to have that yellow rod there to know the value of the unit fraction to add. Should we try another one? I think you can do this now. We're going to look at one more example of this together. Let's have a look. This time the blue rod represents the whole. What fraction of the whole is represented using the light green rods? And can we write this in an addition equation? Let's have a look. How many light green rods would make the whole? Hmm, I think that there's enough space for one more light green rod, meaning that there will be three green rods making the whole. We can see two of them. So what would one light green rod be worth? Hmm, write it down. And then we need to add another fraction that's represented by the light green rod. And then what does that equal? Let's have a look. Did you write this equation? One third plus one third equals two thirds. And I'm going to move my fraction bar first and the denominator and the numerator. Two thirds plus one third equals two one thirds or two thirds. I'm so pleased if you got that answer right. You're getting so good at these now. Let's have a look at this question. Let's have a go. Which representation matches each equation? You can see two representations made with crease and air rods. The top one has the yellow bar representing the whole. And on the second representation, the orange bar is representing the whole. On the equations, if I look at the denominators, what do I notice? What's the same and what's different? That's right. I can see that both equations are made up of one fifths. So this tells me that both representations must show one fifths. But how can we match them up? What other information do we know? Hmm. Well, in the top representation with the yellow and white bars, if one white bar is worth one fifth, how many do we have in the representation? I think I heard you say that we have two of them. We have one fifth and another one fifth. So that would match to the bottom equation, wouldn't it? Where it says one fifth plus one fifth equals two one fifths or two fifths. Let's just have a look at the other one and check that they match together too. We're told that these red bars represent one fifth of the whole. And we can see that we have three one fifths here. So does our remaining equation represent this too? Yes, it does. It tells us that three fifths is the same as one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth. And that is what's shown on our representation. So we've managed to successfully match the Cuisinaire representation with the equation. Well done if you got this right. And extra well done if you could explain why. Can you have a go at completing this equation? Let's have a look. This time the blue bar represents the whole. How many of the white bars would be equivalent to the blue bar? 
Hmm, well, this helps us because the denominator is already written for us in the equation. It says two eighths is equal to, hmm, I wonder what could go in there. Oh, you're right. Two eighths is equal to one eighth plus another one eighth. Well done. It's really sad that it's almost time for me to go now. However, I'm going to leave you with some practice activity questions as usual. That's because practice makes progress, as any good mathematician will tell you. There are five equations for you to complete here. Do you notice that some of them have missing boxes, just like the practice question that we've just completed together? And some of them, like the second question, just says four eighths is equal to. Hmm wonder what we can put in there using our learning from the past couple of lessons. Hmm, I wonder if you could write some fractions that add up to four eighths, just in the way we've been doing. And also for five eighths. And then this question changes a little bit. Watch out for the symbols, that equals sign and the position of it is really important. And the last one as well. I think that will give your brain a good workout. And there's one more question to come to make your brain grow even bigger. Are you ready for a challenge? This problem, I'd like you to have a go. You might need your visualising skills that you've been using throughout these lessons. Stan is making a repeating pattern with some white and some grey cubes. You can see them in the diagram. I'd like you to write an addition of a unit fraction to show what fraction of his model is made of grey cubes. I know you can do it. Try your very best and we'll see you next time. Thanks for working so hard. Bye.